Hello and welcome to YHTV's Trinity of Life. This is episode 46. I'm Christina Suzuma, your host of this program. Thank you so much for joining me again as I continue to explore the wonderful world of healing arts, meditation, therapies, and the many modalities of helping us find balance in our individual journeys. We're always excited to meet those of you who are on the leading edge of creating change on this planet. Now, at any time during this live presentation, you can feel free to ask a question or make a comment by scrolling down your screen and typing it into the comment box. And I will come up on my screen and I will be happy to hear it, uh, read it to our guest. Or if you prefer to ask um, the guest directly or, or speak to the guest directly, you are very welcome to dial into our conference line at 323-476-3672. With the ID access number of 607393 pound. Now, this number will show up during our show so that uh, just in case you didn't have enough time to write it down, you will see it displayed on the screen. Our guest today is an individual whom I had the honor of meeting at the Natural Products Expo West here in Anaheim, California. And I felt that. What she has chosen to do really has benefited and will benefit millions of people and their children out there in the world today, hence why she is a guest on Trinity of Life. Her name is Iris Seamus. Hello, Iris. Welcome to Hello. Trinity of Life. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Um, how, how is everything over there on the East Coast? It's fine. It's um, a little bit, a little bit of snow on the ground here, but other than that, we're we're holding up and waiting for spring to officially begin. Finally, <laughs> I know. Where's that spring? Right? <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> Please. <laughs> it's, um, so, Iris, it, you know, we were so taken by your product at Expo West because we oh. we really felt um, that it was fun. It was exciting and. Uh, you, you, you've really hit on something that's rest, really necessary in the world, not just here in North America, the English-speaking part of the world, but throughout the world. Um, so, uh, but before we really get into that, uh, can you share with us a little bit of your background, like where you're from and, you know, what was uh, your, your work? Were you at a home mom or were you a scientist? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I, um, was, let's see, I started out in the arts, um, always had like a creative, um, desire, um, started out as, as an actress and then as a writer and then went on to be a producer, went on to work in advertising and then, um, actually ended up working with my husband who, um, sells, uh, his, as an e-commerce site, he sells, uh, toys and, and a lot of kids stuff. Um, at the time I started doing what I was doing, I was actually a stay at home mom. I had two, I had a baby and a toddler and, um, was very busy just taking care of them. And, um, my, my baby, <laughs> um, when he turned one years old, we discovered that he had, um, a severe nut, nut, nut allergy. Mm. Um, also I'm sorry, a nut allergy and yes, we discovered he was severely allergic to nuts as well as um, at the time he was allergic to eggs and and um, and then we also discovered at one point he was allergic to fish. Oh no! And, yeah, and that sort of um, you know rocked our world a little bit. Yeah, and, and this um, was your first child. It was actually my second child. Our, our first child was only fifteen months um, older than him. Uh, I have a daughter, Rebecca. Um, the second child is Benjamin. He is my uh, allergic, my food allergic child. Oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> and none of the other the other two children aren't don't have any symptoms at all. Um, no, I, I, I we've we've since had a third. We have um, Jordan now, who is um, almost three. So I have um, a, I have now a ten year old, a nine year old, and a three year old. Oh, but it's wow. only so far. It's only the um, nine year old who has. Um, allergies and asthma. Uh, oh, oh, well, they go together. 
They yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. In, in yep. a funny yeah. way. When when people yeah. say, oh, my child has asthma and allergies. <laughs> right, right. It, they do. Yeah. And they and do. he has not even grown out of it at all? Like, um, not, have... not, not his food allergies. He did grow out of his egg allergy, which is very common. It's very common um, by the age of five to outgrow an egg allergy. Not, not everyone is so lucky. But the nut ones are, they're very likely to be permanent. There are people who are lucky enough to outgrow them, but statistically I would say, uh, I would say about 70% of kids probably will not outgrow, um, a, a tree nut or a peanut allergy, unfortunately. Oh, that's yeah. very, very interesting. Um, yeah. so he's, uh, He's, I have a whole lifetime. I have a whole lifetime ahead of me to worry. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry, Mom. Just hold it in your thoughts that he will grow out of it. He's only nine. <laughs> you know, maybe there'll be a cure at one point. So that's that's what we that's what we look forward to. Yes. I, 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 I think in his lifetime there will be. I do. Yes. And now have you tried things like um instead of uh the regular peanuts that you would buy off the shelf? Have you tried like the raw peanuts or raw? Well, he's foods? actually not allergic to peanuts. He's allergic to um, what's called tree nuts, which is any other type of nut um, that they grow from the trees, like the cashews, the almonds, the walnuts. Those are oh. all considered a tree nut. A peanut is actually um, a legume. It actually comes from the bean family. Uh, some kids are allergic to both of them and some kids are allergic to one or the other. Um, my son is actually allergic to the tree nuts, not the peanuts. So, uh, and so have you tried the raw versions? No, <laughs> I <wouldn't laughs> you're ever not try even dare. <laughs> no, I, I mean he, he is he is severely allergic. I mean that would be really uh, playing with fire. Yeah, yeah. wow, so, no. <laughs> it's amazing to to live on that edge with your child going to school and things like that. So yes. So, okay, so we understand now, you know, sort of where you've come from and, of course, how wonderful that uh, you were able to be at home mom, which is really yep. nice. And yep. still, and you kind of still are with a slash of entrepreneur now. <laughs> yes, yes. This has become my, uh, a whole, you know, it's taken on a life of its own. I, I joke that it's my fourth child. Yeah. Um, Believe me, I completely <laughs> understand and empathize. Right. <laughs> I still Go ahead. try to balance the whole, you know, as every woman, as every woman has to. But yes. the work, the work as well as the family. Yes, is, but, so but it's a challenge. How, how wonderful that that you are also supporting your child at the same time. Absolutely. Doing what Absolutely. You're doing. Yes. Um, so so tell us how and what compelled you? What shifted while you were a mom at home? What shifted and how long ago that, that you chose to become this entrepreneur and with this focus? Um, it was when Benjamin was about three years old and um, off he went to preschool. I was very excited for him to be in an environment with other children. And um, at the preschool he went to, they were very um, allergy aware um, that you had to come in and fill out forms and, and bring um, uh, the allergy um, emergency plan from the doctor and have his emergency medicine there. And they even hung up like little posters in the classroom. So I felt very comfortable um, about a month into his, about a month into preschool, there was an incident in his class where his teacher, who was a 20 uh, year veteran of the school um, accidentally gave another food allergic child, not Benjamin, but a friend of his, a snack that contained an allergen. Um, it just sort of happened in a moment. She was busy. She forgot. And the child became sick. And he's okay. He, he, he's alive and well today. But he did. It was, it was a scary incident. And it sort of like shook me up um, because I felt very comfortable. And I realized that I would want it to have something a little bit more personal for my child to wear moving forward, going to school, um, going to a play dates or, or anytime he's not with me, just something to remind, to just constantly reinforce the fact that he has an allergy 
and he can't eat something. And, um, I did what every mom did. I, I started shopping. I, I looked around, I, I went online, I went to some stores and I, I just, I couldn't find anything for kids, um, to wear, to remind the teachers or, or, or the babysitter, um, about their allergen or their allergies or whatever their health concern is. And I, also, I couldn't find anything that my son would actually want to wear. That was like a big, um, that was a big component, like something that he would feel good about himself, something that would kind of make him smile and say, oh, yeah, I want to wear this. This is, this is cool, mom. So uh, how old was he at the time? When you was, say preschool, was that like three or four? Yeah, he was three years old. And I, I, I know that any mother of a three-year-old would, can probably tell you just how picky children are about <laughs> Um, (laughs) what you put on them. And, um, I I think it's safe to say that kids, they, they have, they have their own sense of style. They don't, you know, you can't mess, you can't, uh, trick the kids. (laughs) They, they know what's, you know, what they like and what they don't like. And kids like colorful things, kids like fun things, kids like, um, characters, which is why I thought, um, so much of what kids are attracted to is, is just so character driven and why not create these fun characters for them, um, and put the, those characters on in an accessory and, um, make it colorful and make it something that they would want to wear and, you know, make them feel good about themselves too. So that was a big part of how I began to sort of develop the characters, the, the, the Alan Mates characters, um, I, I I did some research. You know what are the what are what are the most common allergens? What um, what are kids mostly allergic to? And you know I spent many nights um, online and reading books and so on. And then I started to sketch out these like fun characters who all had these bios, um, their backgrounds. Created these backgrounds for like these whole this this story. And each story was was related to that type of allergen. Ooh. So, yeah. So, it, you know, it wasn't just like random. It was just very much, um, yeah, I put a lot of thought into it. Um, the, the peanut character, his name is Peanutty. And um, peanuts are actually the most, probably the most common allergen and the most concerning today. And um, I... So I, I thought of a character who was sort of um, somebody who was used to be popular, but now is not so popular anymore. And he's a little bit um, trying to get your attention again. He wants to be in the in crowd again, but he just can't seem to make his way. He's uh, he's, he's a little like socially awkward. Uh, made a character who was wearing like a trying to put together like this, trying to wear his baseball cap backwards and wear like a fun gold chain and just trying to like get it get look cool and just not quite succeeding. So that was kind of like the, um, the thought that went into like the characters. Oh, that's great. So you yeah. actually sketched out all the characters. Did- I did. I, I sketched <sighs> them out. I named them and, and my kids named them too. We would sit around and, you know, what should we name the egg character? And my kids and I remember they, they insisted that we name him Eggy. <laughs> Maybe not the most original name in the world, but, um, but they, that, that was, that, that was the, uh, my daughter was, I think four or five at the time. And th- that was, um, the name that I let them name the egg, um, dairy character. We named him pint, um, the wheat character. We named him professor Wheatley, uh, the fish character. We named him detective Finn. um, <laughs> so the soy character we named him soy cool um so we, we just had fun coming up with names and again all the names and all their stories are sort of connected to what that allergen what the characteristics of that allergen is that's great well of course they're, they're the kids so they sort of know what I mean, whatever comes out of their mouth, we as adults might go, uh, I don't know, but hey, it came out of their mouth. So. Yeah. And you know what? It, you know what? Kids like things and they like them simple. You know, yes. they, they, that's the beauty of it. It's, it's really, you know, what's a, what's a fun, simple name and that's what kids relate to. And, and so 
you got to go with it. <laughs> right, right, right. If the kid says it, you got to go with it, right? That's fabulous. So you have a story behind each of your characters. Yes, yes. <laughs> and if you go on our website and you click on that character, it actually tells you um, that character's name, where they were born, what, what their bio is. Um, it has a little bit of information about that allergen and some tips. And yeah, the idea is to, to create a world for these ki- for, for the children, not just a product, but, but really like a world that they can relate to. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's magnificent. And you see your, your involvement in this really has involved the whole family. It has absolutely. Yep. My kids are both consider themselves vice presidents. Oh, bravo. <laughs> yes. And it, it, it absolutely has been very much a family, uh, family endeavor. <laughs> and how long has, have you been doing this? When did you start? Um, I started, let's see, my son is nine now. So I guess, um, that, you know, the first started, as I mentioned, the, the incident in his school started when he was three. So that was about six years ago. Um, but at first I wasn't, it wasn't like I said, Oh, I'm going to start a business and I'm going to create this whole world for children and I'm going to sell products and, and one day, and they're going to be available in met in, in retail stores worldwide. It, it, it just sort of started where I had this idea. I wanted to do something for children, um, who had allergies and asthma and, and maybe even other health concerns. Uh, and, I thought, how, to, how would I go about it? I mean, the, the whole, it was, so it was like, it was a process. So I would say, even sketching out those characters, it, you know, it was fun. It was something that I, would, I did with the kids. It was almost like a hobby, but I knew that I wanted to, you know, this was, we were going to do something with it. And so that probably, we spent months and months doing that. And um, by the time I actually even, I didn't know how to manufacture anything. So it was a whole process. You know, what do I do now? How do I, how do I get stuff made? I, you know, I can sketch it on a piece of paper, but how do you then, so that, it, it was a process. It took many, it took years. It took probably a good year, at least from the first time I ever, um, conceived of the idea to the first time I ever actually held a sample in my hand. Of, of actually, actual that's not a lot of time. I yeah. I mean, maybe, <laughs> maybe it took less. I mean, there was actually a time where the kids, we would actually, we would, uh, <laughs> just to see what the what the product would kind of look like, yes. we actually bought these sh- uh, shrinky dink, the you know the shrinky dink paper. Yes, yes. And we we put that we like. I'm trying to remember because this is years ago, but we were able to get the images on the shrinky dink and bake them and and kind of create like a little dog tag I created for my son. Oh, how great! Yeah, with his, I still have them here somewhere. Um, with his nut character. And he would wear it on a chain and everyone would think it was so great. And, you know, it was just, it was just an idea of how do I, you know, what, what, what is this going to look like? And then eventually, um, we had it, we, we found a manufacturer and went through that whole process that, that, that whole learning curve and so on. So <laughs> it's quite, it's quite a process. I, I do understand. And it is, it is, <laughs> unless you come from a family and, and, you know, this is what your parents did or, or your, your, it's, it's, it's. It's pretty amazing. But, it's, you have to uh, learn it. Yes, yes. But uh, what we were talking about before the show actually started, which was about how fast the pace of the world is becoming, yet yes. information is so accessible to everyone. You know what? I, I think about had I had we not been in the age of the internet, yes, uh, it would have taken me a dozen years right. to, to get to where I got to. I mean, even just the research alone and learning about you know, I became kind of like an expert uh, over the years in, in sure. allergies and I had to be, um, and just the, the amount of research we did and, and to find everything was, it, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. I, I think it would have taken a lot longer had we not have that access yes. and the ability to get information and, and to connect with others. And right. it's, it's true. It is very true. It is quite amazing. I mean, uh, to think that it really has helped so many people like yourself, you know, become entrepreneurs and actually, you know, create products that uh, so help everyone else, you know. Right. Yep. And when it's you say, just... oh, a year, well, a year is not that long. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Compared but to I'm 10 thinking... years ago, it right, would have been a right. different story. Yes. Yes. A year is, is not that long. 
Oh, that's that's fabulous. Now, and you um, know, when you get started, you never know how long it, it, this is going to take. Absolutely. I didn't, I didn't have like a goal, like I need to have this done within this amount of time. You know, I was, I was also a mother with two very young children, and sort of enjoying that time in my life as well. Well, well, you're so fortunate to to do that, and also <laughs> um, create this whole product line here. Um, so, coming back to like allergies and the mm-hmm. amount that you've had to learn and and how to research. Um, what what would you say are some of the very key points that parents and guardians should be aware of? I mean, um, can you share some other experiences that you may have run into, or you know, your your uh, friends may have run into? Sure. That you know, I always say, especially to new parents. You know, it's, it's, as you say, it was kind of a shakeup in your world when mm-hmm. you suddenly went, wow, you know, and depending on the reaction, you know, sometimes children balloon up, they turn red, yes. rashy, yes. they gag, you know, it, it's very frightening when you are yes. a new parent and you've yes. never seen anything like this. And of course you hear about it, but it's somewhere distant at the back of your mind because there's so much more going on. So what, Absolutely. what would you share with, with these parents and guardians um, about some of the point key points that you feel that they should be sort of uh, aware or very conscious about? Um, I think every parent who has a child with a severe, a severe allergy probably remembers the first time they discovered their child's allergy because usually it involves a very a pretty tra- traumatic um experience. You're watching your child suddenly over, you know, a snack, uh, get sick and break out into hives and and start throwing up. And, you know, depending on the severity of your child's allergy, I mean, I have friends whose children, um, their throat closed and they couldn't breathe and, and, and so on. So I think that, um, most parents sort of remember that moment, unless they were fortunate enough to discover that their kid has an allergy. And I say that lightly, uh, maybe they were fortunate enough to discover it in a different way. Maybe they did blood work because they already had a child with an allergy and they wanted to make sure on, on, on their, their second child before he ever ate uh, a common allergen. Um, I think it's very important that you're always aware as a parent, um, you, you basically have to monitor everything your child eats and you have to teach your child, um, to monitor everything they eat, which is, um, it's just a constant challenge. And it's, it's just something that you have to constantly reinforce to your, for yourself as well as, as, as to your child. Um, it's very important to educate the people around you or the people who are watching your child, your child, uh, whether it be the teachers or a babysitter, or daycare, um, it's, it's that constant um, reminding, the constant awareness. Um, it's very important to uh, see a doctor. Um, a doctor will help determine the level of your child's allergy. There are, there are like, like, we, like we spoke earlier, there are allergens that your child can outgrow. Um, there are ones that get worse, and so that's really... I have a question. Mm-hmm. How do they, because I know as a, I was a very sick child growing up and I did have oh. allergies. I did have asthma. <laughs> right. I had the gamut. Um, right. And every so many years they would do, you know, the allergy tests and right. they would do right. the skin tests on the arm mm-hmm. where they would, mm-hmm. you know, just kind of inject little um, right. vials allergens. and whatever yep. allergens yeah. into my body. Yep. And of course, everything mm-hmm. came up. Uh, <laughs> I'm going, and as I got older, I would look at the, the nurses and go, well, you're injecting it directly in my skin. What do you expect? <laughs> right. <laughs> I, and because I, I had sensitive skin anyways, cause right. I had eczema and, and it's like anything you just, you don't even have to have an allergen in there. If you prick my skin, it's going to balloon <laughs> up, you right. know? And it was the, the funniest thing is I was, when I got to the teenage years, I'm going, okay, what next? You know, um, how is there? Do they test a young child the same way? They do. They do. Um, sometimes, Ouch. yeah. I mean, honestly, I think even worse than that test is the blood test, um, which oh. is 
the way that they, I think the blood test is even um, a better indication of the level because they have like different levels. Um, they rate your, it's called IgE, but I'm not going to get like all medical here. Um, I remember when my son was like four or five and I took him to get blood work and they have to draw blood. And I, I think that's just a very scary thing for a child. And I remember him crying and saying, mommy, why did you let the, why did you let the lady do that to me? You know, he blamed me for, um, for that. And it's, Oh, that's you know, hard. Yeah, <laughs> that's hard. really it tough. Hard. It's like, why aren't you protecting me? <laughs> exactly. Oh, exactly. I, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> that's, it that's hard for, for our heartstrings. You have to do it. Um, you know, the, the doctors know, uh, what kind of allergens are, your child is likely to outgrow and which ones are, can get worse. And so you kind of want to see, um, over the years is my, is my reaction to a, a shellfish or a peanut or a tree nut allergy? Is it getting, is, are my numbers escalating or are they mm-hmm. decreasing? So, um, it's very possible that you're, you had a, pretty bad reaction to a peanut or, or, you know, whatever it is. And you didn't think it was so bad. And the next time you have a reaction, your child has a reaction, it could be much worse. So, you know, it's important to to know and and be aware of, of uh, your child's um, allergy levels. And it's important that if your child is at risk for a severe allergic reaction, um, they need to have their emergency medicine with them at all times. And that's just becomes like a way, you know, a way of life. And luckily it's not medication that you're taking, um, on a, on a daily basis. As a matter of fact, you're hopefully you'll never have to take it, but it is something that it's sort of like your little lifesaver. You should always make sure it's, it's somewhere, somewhere nearby. So when you're, whether you're at school and most, most of the schools today, I don't even think they even allow a child into a classroom if they don't have their um, prescription of uh, epinephrine available. But um, as a mom, you have to know every time you go out for dinner, every time you're traveling, it should always be nearby. And, you know, it's constant. I mean, there have been times where I've, I've left it at home. I've left my son's um, um, auto injector, the epinephrine at home and, and had an, had an incident and oh, no, yeah, that's um, another thing. Um, as a parent, you just always have to ask. I mean, no matter how, no matter, it, it's just always best to ask wherever you are to to verify the ingredients. Um, I'm just just about um, just a few months ago, we were out to dinner, and um, this Greek restaurant I love. I always get this beet salad. It's delicious, and I'm not even that. I don't even like beets that much, but this is just sensational. And we were with my son, and I order the beet salad and I don't, you know, I don't, I wouldn't order a dish, um, that, that had an allergen if I'm with my son, obviously. Um, and, um, last, you know, just as the waiter was, my son ordered something chicken or uh, French fries. And just as the waiter was about to leave, I said, Oh, by the way, I'm just checking. Uh, there's, there's no, what, what, what is in that beet salad? Why is it so good? Or, or, and he said, "Oh, it's um, there's almonds in 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 the in, <laughs> in the sauce. You know, you can't see them, but they're in like the this yogurt sauce that they put on it." And I was like, "What? <laughs> like, oh. Yeah, I mean, yes. Yeah. So you just always, always have to ask and always verify and always double check and triple check. And if you're not comfortable, then bring your own stuff. I mean, so that's just the constant awareness and um, that a parent." Uh, experiences with their child and, uh, the, you know, the birthday parties that you have to go to. And if you don't know what what the, what's the, what's in the cupcakes and, you know, you bring your own. And so it's just being, um, just another thing on your list of to do <laughs> as a parent <laughs> out of the 90 million things that we deal with these days. So it's just that, but at one point you become, you become an expert at it. You, you become, it's just a part of a part of your everyday life and yeah. and it's, it's like amazing a yes it's, it's amazing how how we create that balance to kind of know yes. you know this is what we have to do and this yeah. and this and this and this is what right. you know and and we make that time and and it just seems as you say it becomes our habitual everyday life yes. that that this yes. is all a component of it okay where's yes. this where's that where's the medication right. where's 
you know. And also, right. um, I know that my uh, nephew's child had mm -hmm. uh, severe allergies w to uh, gluten, to eggs, yeah. to nuts, uh, mm -hmm. etc. And um, thank goodness she didn't have the asthma. <laughs> right. But but she got it, and she was she was a baby, and I know that um, her mother re reads every packet, even when she's at the restaurant. She right. says, "May I please see the package for the pasta?" You know, right. <laughs> she just will sit there and go, "Yes or no," and things like that. And right. I mean, thankfully, the child I, I would assume the child is uh, I, I think nine now. Right. Okay. But even by five. That child, uh, that little girl, I tell you, when, oh, even younger than that, I remember, um, when offered anything, she would just graciously said, no, thank you. I may be allergic. That that's, child would not touch wonderful. or drink anything. Well, then until, her mother did a very good job with her. Yeah, that's, until the, that's wonderful. she would say, please show my mommy. And she right. would not, even as family and relatives. And mm -hmm. after the okay from the mom, unless her mother nodded her head, this kid would not touch it. It's right. like, I don't want to go through that. She knew, but I do that, not want to go through absolutely. that. Absolutely. You know, it's funny because when my son had his first allergic reaction, he was um, one years old. And I'm sure, you know, he had no recollection of that reaction, um, which is, and I had a friend who's daughter had her allergic reaction, um, at an age where she, it was very vivid in her memory. Um, and her, as a result of that, I felt like my son didn't understand my concern all the time where my friend's child was the, was the opposite. She was the one who was always very nervous about everything she ate. Right. Um, are you sure this is, doesn't have anything? I can't eat it. She, you know, she was a little, almost to the point where I felt sorry for her because, it was really, you could tell, like... The experience really... It was traumatizing. Yeah. Yeah, she was traumatized. And um, it's funny. It wasn't until my son, at one point, did have, like, another allergic reaction and sort of understood what that felt like, mm. that um, he became a lot more careful and a lot more understanding as to why I always was so careful. So, um, and he's, you know, he's been... Really amazing, I have to say. There are times where I think, oh, I feel so sorry for him. All these kids are sitting here eating cookies and he can. But, you know, I look over at him and he doesn't feel sorry for himself. And I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that, that's, that his attitude is he sort of just shrugs, can't have it. He doesn't, he's fine with it. So, And actually, I was, um, about, I, I was about to say, well, maybe that's a really good thing. <laughs> because, you know, the, the cookies and what we, I think, in, at least in my generation growing up, you know, the soda, the, uh, the candies that the adults would give us. And, you know, coming from an Asian background mm. um, and uh, the Portuguese background. Lots of nuts. Yeah, lots of, nuts, <laughs> lots of yeah. you know, lots of candy because it sweetens mm -hmm. life. It's representation of, of, of life and, you know, uh, happiness and and uh, it's funny. It's it, I, I kind of look at that and go, "Oh wow, our diet was so poor." And right. And then uh, now raising my own child, who is five, uh, you know, going on six, it's always that awareness. And and for now for him, it's it's uh, really uh, to he is not does not have allergies. But okay. I've raised him to the point where he will look at a cookie or he will look at what someone else has brought and he'll say, look at whatever can he, and, and sometimes he'll go, can I try that? And I said, of course you can try it. Just know that that's not very good for you. Right. But right. you try it and he's tried it right. and he's going, that's really sweet. And right. he's starting to look at things like, oh, that's junk food. Oh, that's so, right. so they can differentiate by now the differences, right. which is right. really great. It is. And they don't feel like they're missing out, really. It's, I find that they get to a point where to be different is kind of fun. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, I think we live in, live in a time where it's okay. It's good to be a geek. <laughs> it's yes. not that different, right? <laughs> yes, yes. So, yeah, I think that, um, and I think that the more you, 
your child learns, the more you teach them, the more uh, they're they're aware and they're more they're they're accepting and they understand what's good for them and what's not and so on. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Because um, yeah, especially when they get into a little older, it's like I I get to do these things you don't. <laughs> Right. You know, and of course, then you have all your friends asking, well, what's that for? Or how come? And and it's a little bit of a popularity thing, too. <laughs> right. <laughs> Something to look forward to. Yeah. Um, now, uh, uh, creating this project, and just to let you know, while we've mm-hmm. been on the show and you've been talking, uh, we've had your your logo and the, your different characters also come up on screen at the same time, okay. so people know what we're talking about. Oh, okay, good. Yes. <laughs> um, so <laughs> yes, and and uh, he uh, right now we've just popped up um, the the your wristbands that you've created okay. and the picture of the wristbands. Okay. Now, you so you've been doing this for for a while now, um, mm-hmm. and you so you've been selling this product on the market for how long? Um, I would say about three years now that it's been in the market. And of course you started off on the East coast first. I started off on the East coast. I, it's funny. I, I sold this product before I even had it in my hand. Uh, I literally had image of his images of the product. Um, my husband showed it to a friend of his who owned a restaurant. I have never even met them. And I got a call from his wife. Apparently their child has a peanut allergy. And she said, I, I want to order one of your peanut allergy dog tags. And I, I was like, I don't even, I don't even have them yet. You know? So, um, <laughs> I think, I think you know that you're onto something, um, pretty good when you're already starting to sell it and you don't even have it yet. So, um, I started really by opening up like a, a store online and selling it to local stores. Um, wound up, uh, I think somebody I knew said, Oh, you know, send a sample, um, over to, this name, um, uh, Walgreens, I think it was like a, a major retailer. And I literally got an email from them saying, Oh, we are interested in carrying your product. Can you supply uh, 7,000 stores? And this is our terms. And I was like, Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Stop right there. Um, so I knew that there was a lot of interest out there and I knew that there was, there was a need. I, I mean, I, I knew from personal experience that there was a need. So, um, That's great. Yeah. So then I had to sort of, you know, it's one thing to create a product. It's another thing to create a business. And that was a whole other challenge was how do I, you know, now that I know that there is a demand, um, even for like a, for, even for a superstore potentially, how do I, how do I build this? How do I manage this? How do I scale up? You know, so that, that took a while to figure out as well, hiring people and just, starting, starting a real business. So it's all a learning curve. <laughs> it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop it doesn't at all. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Now, yeah. have you had any reaction from the medical community? Oh my goodness. I can't even tell you how, how, uh, how well received this has been from the medical community. As a matter of fact, I think I, I first, um, uh, my allergist, um, is one of the first first persons that I showed the product to, um, I waited until I had, you know, samples in my hand. I didn't really want to let him know about it before. I was afraid he would, he would not think it was a great idea. And I would be like discouraged from, from continuing. Um, but when I did, I, when I did, um, go into, go into his office one day, I think I was there for my own allergies. I said, Oh, I have this idea for, for, for a kid's product. Um, it's, uh, you know, take a look at what I, put together and it was like a whole sort of like a little bit of a presentation as well as a product. He flipped out. I mean, he was just like jumping up and down. I remember he picked up the phone, called up his wife and said something like, I I just saw the greatest thing. (laughs) One of my, my patients just walked in here with the greatest thing I've ever seen. And, um, he actually forced me, literally pushed me into doing a, a trade show at a, uh, a convention. It was like an allergist, Oh, allergy great. education. Yeah. He was like, you have to go, you have to let, you know, doctors like me know about this. And we had this, uh, this little, 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 little booth, um, behind all the huge, uh, um, pharmaceutical company booths, um, next to like the support groups and so on. And, and we were, it was amazing. It was really amazing. The, the physicians were 
so excited to see a product like this Um, because they are the ones who encourage the parents and the children. You should always wear an accessory, um, a medic alert and an alert accessory. You should always let people know, always remind people about your allergy. You know, there's no cure for allergies. Um, There's only awareness and, and avoidance. And so it's very much a big part of what they uh, promote and recommend. And so they were excited that some, you know, to see something that kids would, would, would make kids happy and and make them, um, encourage them to wear something that, um, alerted others to their allergy or, or now, now, as I mentioned to you, you know, we're doing asthma, uh, we have wheat gluten-free, um, awareness, uh, wristbands. Um, we even have vegan because we got a lot of a lot of requests from the natural, natural food world. So, um, we're, 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 but the, um, for the most part, it's been, yeah. Um, my husband and I joked that there were so many physicians that came over to our booth and they would say, um, this is brilliant genius. And we would look at each other like, you know, you're hearing this from like a doctor who's really smart (laughs) (laughs) and they're sitting there going, this is so brilliant. And we're like, Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not bad for a uh, housewife from Jersey at the time, but um, yeah, that's it. it. Was it was fun? So it was. It's been really well received, and they've been very supportive of it. Oh, that's great. We we're showing yeah. the dog tags right now, and a close up of uh, I think that's uh, Mr. Nut, isn't it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> So this is this is great because um, uh, as we're speaking, um, Segovia here is uh, taking images of your product. So I'm oh, not great. even having to hold them up right now. It's good. <laughs> oh, okay. I have some here. I have our little peanut band. And yes. I have some, but if you've got them there, then yes, I and I, I think covers. people know what we're talking about, right? Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. Um, it's like uh, I have the. The, the newest one that you made, I think, I Have Allergies Band. Yes, the, the, yes, have, it's a thicker, uh, I'm going to just take it out of the light a little bit here. There we go. Um, so you can write the contact info at the yes. back, which yes, is hard to yes. see. But mm-hmm. you were saying that they just use a ballpoint pen and write it and yes. then boil yes. it. And it they becomes permanent. It. it becomes permanent. Yes. You know what? As my son became older... Um, I thought um, that I would I needed to come up with other products that sort of um, for a different potentially a different um, age child. I mean this um, this band I feel like is I mean I think an adult could even wear it. I mean it's just a little bit more um, geared towards the the, the, the the tween or or even the teenager. I have um, to tell you, I, I would wear this, which I have it on my wrist right now. I would wear right. this before those ugly silver bands <laughs> that we grew up <laughs> with, which I would just keep taking <laughs> off and putting in my bag or my purse as opposed to wearing it because it was so right. so bad, you know? Yes. So this basically replaces the need for, an ex, you know, sometimes ex, uh, pricey engraved jewelry because your information is right here with you. And it's just, it's soft, it's, it's fun. And who needs, um, who needs to spend a lot of money on, on a medic alert accessory if you've got something like this? Absolutely. And, and what's great is you even have the ones for, for asthma Mm -hmm. and you have Mm -hmm. the, uh, what, vegan, you know, and that may not be um, an an illness of any sort or an imbalance, no, it's but not. it's a choice, which is it really is interesting. Choice. Yes, it's a, it's, um, it's a healthy lifestyle choice. Yes, and um, there are there are many. There's there are actually a lot of kids with allergies that are mm-hmm. vegan because they're they're allergic to every protein out there, and so mm-hmm. they choose to to eat a vegan diet. Um, but then there's the, the 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 families who are are vegan by choice, and um, we felt that. It fit in because it is it is a it is a healthy um, lifestyle and it's the same idea as the parent whose child is is vegan. They're sending them to school. They're sending them on play dates, and they want to remind people that um, of their child's uh, dietary needs or dietary. Um, well, this time it whether it's a need or it's just a, it's just a, their their choice. 
it's a reminder and it's, it's awareness. It's don't feed my daughter a hamburger. <laughs> She's vegan. <laughs> yes. So yes. It's, it's again, it's just awareness and, and, and a little friendly reminder mm-hmm. and something that the child Again, something that makes them feel good about themselves. Absolutely. I, I mean, uh, I'm just going to show one of the, the lunch boxes here. Oh, okay. And this is uh, my... your, your wheat gluten-free lunch yes. box, yes. which I, is I... really lovely. They're all insulated as well? Yes. Yes, they're all insulated. They're all made out of, um, they're all BPA and phthalate and lead-free. Um, the... You know, we, we, uh, you know, as everyone knows, the wheat gluten has become such a common, um, wheat gluten free, I should say, has yes. become such a, a common way of, um, such a, such a popular, um, whether it's a, uh, lifestyle choice or it's just a health concern. I have a friend whose child has, uh, celiac. I also have a cousin who has two, both her daughters are celiac. And she was telling me that when her daughters um, always have to carry their their own snacks, I mean, it's very similar in a way to like the the food allergic child. Mm -hmm. Um, They can't eat something. If they do, they'll get sick. Um, They sort of, they have to many times bring their own. Um, And I thought, and and she was saying there's nothing for my child to carry their food in that makes her feel good about herself. And there are many times we have to come to the parties with our own, with our own snacks in hand. And so I thought I, sh- I need to do a, a, a lunch bag for these kids. Um, we also did these snack bags, which I have uh, which right are, here. Yeah. <laughs> they're, really, they're cute. They're they so are cute. cute. And again, these are the kind of kids oh, right. that are, that are, that they need to carry their own snacks sometimes. Um, if they don't know if they're going to have a safe snack at, at the play date they're on or at the party they're going to. And so we wanted to, um, wanted to create something for them to carry their stuff in something that was colorful and, and fun and, and represented, um, their health concerns. So I thought the wheat gluten came out really wonderful. We're really happy with it. Yeah. They're, they're lovely. I really like that. <laughs> um, and also this is a, a different kind of, uh, a bracelet, which is uh, very fun, which mm. is, uh, they actually choose their pendants that they'd like to put if they have more than oh, one right. allergy. Yes. Which unfortunately, I would say about, uh, I think it's about 40%, maybe it might even be a little more, of all children who have an allergy um, have more than one allergy. So um, those are those lucky kids, <laughs> like my own, who um, is allergic to, as I mentioned before, tree nuts, can't have salmon, and also we don't give them anything with sesame in it. Um, a lot of children who are allergic to nuts and peanuts, they find it's Sesame has a very, they have a very similar reaction. So, oh, interesting. yeah, so we had a lot of, um, you know, a lot of times people just bought our bands and layered them, but we thought it wouldn't be nice if there was just one band and they could put, you know, put in their allergen. Um, we also have like an asthma charm and we're doing a lot more that we gluten. We are doing diabetes. I think we have about, 20 charms right now available. And I, and by the end of, uh, by the, by this summer, we'll have, um, at, at least 30. So, um, wow, you're drawing up a new, uh, 10 more characters. <laughs> yes. Yes. Cause we're doing, um, corn. We get a lot of requests for corn. We got a, a lot of requests for, um, berries. Um, uh, food dyes is very common. Um, I, I have a comment here, um, mm-hmm. that, uh, one mom wished that she had these when her child was a baby and is uh, asking right now, is there one for no sugar? You know, that's funny. That's, it's, that's a request that we've gotten just recently is, mm-hmm. is the no sugar one. And yes. I, I can, you know, if we get on, what happens is we just start to get a lot of requests for a certain, for something. And then we say, Oh, I guess there's a need for this. So, um, it's something that we'll definitely look into because it seems to be, um, it seems to, you know, they, these things, they kind of pop up and it's like, oh, suddenly everyone's asking for no sugar. Yeah. So, well, well, what's uh, interesting though, is I'm finding that there's a core of, uh, people, a huge core of people who have no idea about like corn syrup and, mm. you know, all that whole line yes, of fructose yes. and, you know, they don't realize that that is another form of it. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's not too good and for I, you. <laughs> yeah, it's not too good for you. And and a lot of 
people are are their you know their immune systems are are responding to it yes. and they're allergic. Um, corn is definitely something that we hear a lot. A lot we get a lot of requests for corn, right. and I think that's um, going to be available very soon. Very cool. Um, yep. I also want to show our guests. Um, I mean, our <clears throat> viewers, your stickers, which I oh, only okay. saw when I was leaving. This is. Don't eat me. I'm not gluten free. <laughs> yes. So I I have found that in like in my own home, everybody has a very different uh, comfort level of what they will allow in their home and what they won't allow. Um, we have a son who has a nut allergy. My husband likes to have his protein bars. I on occasion like to have um, granola, and we feel like he's at an age where work where. We're comfortable enough to have stuff in our house as long as it's labeled, and he knows not that it's not for, it's not for him. So I I don't really know if there are any labels that um, have a, that exist in the marketplace. I I just said there should be a way to label this for the kids that's you know fun and you could just mark off and you put it on the food and, and he knows not to go there. And so if my husband wants to keep his protein bars <laughs> in, in the pantry. I'm fine with it as long as there's a sticker on it and my son knows that that, that, that that's not for him. And again, every family has different, you know, comfort Absolutely. level of what what they'll do and what they'll, they won't do. Um, I have a friend who has one child who is celiac and the other doesn't. And, you know, they're always struggling. Do we make our whole house uh, wheat gluten-free? Do we, you know, so this is, these are some of the concerns that, that families are dealing with today. Right. Um, and so we have these, these labels, which I think is such a wonderful product to help oh, manage yes. your pantry or refrigerator. If there are certain items that you keep in the house for this child, but this one can't, here's a way of just, here you go, label it. It's fun. And it just calls out that well, that's, that's what I thought when I saw that, that was the, the, the end of the third day at the expo. And, um, okay. when I saw <laughs> that 9 million different things, I know it was like, uh, well, luckily we ran into, uh, your, um, Oh, Andrew, uh, Andrew, your marketing gentleman. Yes. He's lovely. Your team is just yeah. lovely. Yeah. Um, and when we I ran into we him, a nice team. Thank you. Yes. Really lovely. Yes. Um, and he showed me these stickers and I was like, yeah. Oh, those are brilliant because, you yep. know, as a young child, you know, a year and a half, two years old already, even up to nine, they love stickers. Yes. And for them to be able to label what they Absolutely. cannot eat. Right. You know, gives, empowers them to have yes. that understanding. A fabulous idea. Fabulous. Um, those stickers are actually available um, in Kmart nationwide. Uh, the what the Kmart's that have a pharmacy department because I don't think all of them do, but the ones that do, they actually carry a very large selection of our product. Um, and that sticker is also going to be available this spring in CVS nationwide. Fabulous! Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, we saw so. your my my son actually picked out your product at CVS the other day. Oh, he looked good. up and he said, "Mommy, oh, wow. the bracelets, the allergy bracelets," and I was like, <laughs> "Good eye." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just you know. Yeah. Yeah, we're he, thrilled. Yeah, we're so nice when you know the, the CVS um, buyers and then the Kmart buyers and 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 they they couldn't have been more um, supportive of this product. They really were excited to put something in their stores that that were that were helpful to parents and families. And, and they really, I have to say that um, you know, I really appreciate that them recognizing the Absolutely. need. And, yeah, so yeah, I, I would love to see this educated in the school systems. Yes, I really would um, like that. We're, we're working on some programs, um, trying to um, work with some uh, school education, um, trying to put together some programs for them. Fabulous. Well, you have yeah. to get definitely keep me posted. Uh, as we're coming okay. up to our hour, Iris, there's also one thing that I felt was really important to show our audience, which yes. was uh, your bag for the Epi. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, your Epi bags. You know, they're, yep. they're so much fun. And I love the little clip that you have on them. So it looks really cool. <laughs> and your Velcro at the back, you know. Yep. Uh, if, we wanted to, you know, let people be able to use this in so many different ways. There's, there's a hook. They can hook it onto their backpack. 
there's the Velcro. They could hook mm-hmm. it onto their backpack that way or onto a belt. Right. And I know that when I, you know, when I drop my son off at a friend's and he has to take his epinephrine with him. And it's, it's just very awkward always to leave it with another person and they kind of get a little nervous and what do I do with this and, 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 and so on. And so we, we wanted to create something that was like a friendly medicine case. Um, not only is there a, a place for all the medicine and it's insulated and you can store them at the right temperature, but there's even instructions inside that, that are very um, user-friendly, sort of very just big images on here's what to do in case of an emergency. There's a emergency contact card. So you know, we, we kind of thought, thought it through, like what is it that a parent, like myself, because I live this life, um, what, are they, what is it that they need and what would make What's, what's a tool we can, what, that we could create for them to really make this part of their lives easier? And so um, um, I think that this is, it's really exciting to see this. And the, again, this, um, these Epi cases are available um, at Kmart. And this spring, they're going to be available at CVS as well. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, <clears throat> that, it's very exciting because I, I keep thinking of it, the story that you told about even dropping your child off to their grandparents. And the grandparents are uncomfortable receiving, Absolutely. you know, everything here is, uh, you know, this already, it helps break the ice. It's friendly. It's fun. Yeah. It's cute. I mean, my, my kids love sleeping at my grandpa- at their grandparents. They love, that's like their favorite place to go. And absolutely, it's, you know, it's intimidating for grandparents. This is a different era that we're living in. I, I think my mother at first didn't even believe me when I told her that Ben had severe allergies. She's like, oh, oh what are you talking about? I, I, I gave you nuts all, all the time when you were young and we <laughs> ate peanut butter and jelly sandwiches every day of your life. And I'm like, but I'm telling you, mom, I actually know of stories people have told me where their mother or mother-in-law didn't believe them. And when they were watching the kids, gave them, <laughs> yes, oh. I, I've heard that story many times. So they learn their lesson. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the hard way. Um, so, but this, you know, you're you're exactly right. This is a, a sort of softer way, and also just more organized. And there's the education in it. Here's what to do, just yes. in case. I mean, you know, we never want anything to happen, and hopefully, most likely, things something won't happen. But you always, you know, you always want to be prepared. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, this has been wonderful, Iris. I mean, thank you yes. so much for sharing your experience and, and your fabulous product. And I, I'm, you know, we're really, really honored and that you could spend this time with us educating all of us on, you know, awarenesses and being more conscious yeah. and... <laughs> And what you have to think about when you have a parent with a food. And to help the the people around us, like the people, our guardians, like our teachers and the schools, you know. Absolutely. Because when you're, you're, everyone is going to experience at one point, they're going to have to care for most likely for a child and who has a food intolerance or an allergen. I mean, that's just the world we live in. And so it's, it's awareness is everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, I, it's hard, it's hard for teachers to keep track. I mean, when you have 20, 25 students to a room, it is. you know, you, you just, it is just hard. I, I feel it for is. them. And, uh, yes. you know, <laughs> it's like, you know, child, you know, colorful band. Right. Which one, what, what can't you, this one can't eat that and what? And so this is just a way of simplifying it and making absolutely. it very clear. Okay. Well, we, we look forward to uh, the products for the teenagers next because uh, we know your son is approaching that level. <laughs> He's starting to, yes. yes. He thinks he is. <laughs> he well, thinks he is anyway. <laughs> oh, of course he is, yes. Yeah. So he just tell him, it's your job to design the next ones, okay? <laughs> <laughs> He's actually very creative. but <laughs> Fabulous. That's a, good, that's a good idea. Yes, yes. You yep. know, ones on the skateboards or, you know, <laughs> whatever it might be. Put him to work. <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much, Iris. We really Thank appreciate you. you taking the time. Thank you so much for having me. And of course, I would like to thank each and every one of you for joining us on this new platform of education and information. We're grateful for your continuous support and look forward to hearing your feedback on how we can serve you better. We invite you to join us live on Tuesdays for Magical Medical Tour at 10.30 a.m. Pacific Time, 1.30 Eastern Time. Wednesdays for Trinity of Life at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 
followed every other week with Flowing Into Awareness with Anatara. And just to let you know, to be in contact with Iris Seamus and her wonderful Allermate products, go to allermates.com and you will, of course, see that on the site itself with the links directly there. I wish you all good health and safety for your children. And until we meet again next time, namaste. Namaste.